Lightning Swamp uh, is a large um, seasonal wetland. It has at least seven species of recorded frogs um, and what makes it unique is that um, you can observe um, merging vegetation of dry land and wetland um, and it has uh, a significant uh, perch wetland um, which um, has a category 4 protection. Notoria Flats and this is our really special sedge site for Sheetanthus aristatus, really special. We've worked on this area since 2001. Just actually weed eradication to bring back the small native herbs every spring. I've got two projects that I'm working on at the moment. One's been going for some years, that's at Throssel Reserve, which is a surfacing granite outcrop at Soyce Valley. And the big thing there's been the Babiana, which is covered in Babiana. Our biggest one probably at Mary Carroll, which has been going for Mary Carroll Lake in Gosnells, which has been going for some time. It's a really active friends group um, led by uh, Eunice, who is the champion of the, the sort of area. She's involved with land care all through that um, sort of Gosnells area. And uh, we do all sorts of stuff. We have school kids involved, we have general public and all sorts of people come down um, to, I guess, help with the planting and, and the weeding, which is always an ongoing, ongoing sort of issue there. Our current project uh, is at Pelican Point with um, with Salk. Um, we're revegetating. Uh, it's a, an absolutely um, important part of the Swan Estuary Marine Park. Our great joy is that we've been able to. Um, get the funding through SALP for erecting an osprey tower which is going up tomorrow. We've been fortunate enough to get another grant from SALP working on the place where we've already started which is part of the Railway Reserves Heritage Trail in Mount Helena. We had removed a lot of woody weeds, we have planted, we have sprayed for weeds and we now have an opportunity to get rid of the woody weeds that we couldn't get rid of in the first round of working hard there. Lower Helena runs for 7 k's through Midland and Guildford and the fact that the uh, river is a winding, meandering river means that we have a lovely wide uh, foreshore reserve going through bringing uh, green right through those suburbs. Uh, our focus is to upgrade the, uh, get rid of the, the uh, exotics and to upgrade the uh, uh, understory with uh, the correct uh, native plants and increase the uh, animal fauna. We're also concerned to establish best practice in fire control, uh, controlling fuel. When the kids come through from the different school groups helping us out with our land care projects, um, it's just fantastic to see uh, some of the kids when they sort of come in. The teachers will sort of uh, explain to you that you know they're a bit of bit of a trouble in in the class, or you know they're not that engaged with the regular sort of learning that they that happens in the schools. And it's often that these kids are the ones that are the most enthusiastic about getting their hands dirty, getting in there, planting, putting the plants in the ground. They're really keen to learn about the environment, and they often tell me things that you know I don't know. You know the names of different birds and stuff like that. Well, for me. Um, most satisfying is working with a community group that are really interested in, in what you're doing, um, covering all ages and really committed to whatever grant process we have. We, we have noticed uh, a number of flocks of carnaby black cockatoo um, sort of migrating through the bushland. For, for us seems to be increasing every year. The most satisfying aspect of my project is seeing the birds sitting in trees that I've planted, seeing the tadpoles in the creeks so that you know that the water quality is good, and seeing the vegetation and the wildlife coming back. So the most satisfying outcomes are when we have birds that are returning to that site that perhaps haven't been seen there. And um, for example, uh, it was written in the literature that the buff banded rail was more or less disappeared from around Perth and they've been starting to come back in some numbers. It, it's like um, a small Kings Park in, in the metro area with you know um, freshwater billabong, saltwater, Adenia Lagoon and having a, a river system 
it's just a wonderful area. We had a little friend come over to chat to us and it was a little willy wagtail flittering around. But this little one we decided in the end must have been nesting because uh, it continued to hover around my rather woolly hair and, and eventually landed on my head and really didn't want to get off. And I had to knock it away and then it jumped on my shoulder and eventually it sat on my hand and I said, well, thank you very much for joining us here on the, on the beach. And uh, this little woolly wagtail's actually popped around quite a few times. It's a great joy. We are not young. We are people who've got a little bit of time that early in the morning. So the characters are just people who've, who've got a, bit of, a fair bit of life experience and um, a wry sense of humour. And we have a lovely morning together. Um, I think possibly George Agar, who's um, a birdo, an ornithologist, um, George is very unpredictable, um, straight to the point, straight to your throat, <laughs> um, tells you if you've got it wrong, and, and that's George. I was working in an area and uh, my head was down and I was unaware of a disturbance that was going on in a very near um, distance and then I actually found that I'd stumbled into a beehive um, and it pursued or they pursued me. I certainly ended up with about five stings on my face and ear um, and that was the end of me for the day. I decided I could uh, uh, cut from that and, and go home. I had quite a funny but scary experience. I was at a small billabong at Nicholson Road billabong and I slipped in the mud and so I couldn't get up immediately so I just sort of sat there and this tiger snake was swimming towards me which was a little bit hairy but I wasn't really really scared and it wasn't really interested in me it just came onto the bank and was trying to get warm and we just sort of sat there looking at each other it was quite fascinating really. The self-funding is really important because without it there's work that's really important which simply could never have gotten done. Being able to eradicate the Babiana at Throssa Reserve at the surface in granite outcrop with, with really unique flora, we simply couldn't do it. We tried for five years by ourselves as a group and we had very little impact on it. So the self-funding is really important. It's made a tremendous difference. The self-funding that uh, we receive, we use pretty much it's devoted to buying plants and doing the weed control so even though we have volunteers that will help with hand weeding and stuff like that um, the broad scale of the sites is just too much for you know manual just total manual removal so that's been really important because a lot of these sites were you know infested these are like the base sort of level sort of things um, that come with the funding but they're essential to to the rest of it which you wouldn't get the people there you know unless they had the planting to do unless they could come out and help with hand weeding and stuff like that. So, you know, that aspect of it is crucial, I think, to public involvement and community involvement, yeah. The work that we do um, costs money. And to be able to um, get tools and equipment, to be able to actually buy the sedges and the plants that we put in, it all takes money, without which we wouldn't be doing reforestation work, revegetation. We can pull out weeds. But if you pull out weeds and you don't replace it with something that's important in that location, another weed will just come back in. So the important work that we do about revegetation is to put in the right species.